Hey everybody, today in the CPTSD podcast, we're going to be talking about the top five things that hurt us when we have CPTSD. They create the most suffering. So we're going to go over that, but we're going to really drill into and dive down into emotional flashbacks and toxic shame. So come on in and uh, let's get going. everybody to season four episode three of the cptsd podcast i'm tabitha bird weaver your host and i am a licensed therapist here on a mission to help those of us with cptsd discover that that is actually the root cause for most of the issues in our life as well as what to do next Um, and today we're going to be talking about the top five things that hurt us the most. And these are all internal experiences that we have developed from being raised in the homes that we were raised in. They are started early and they last and impact our lifetime. So um, if you want to know more about how these are associated with chakras, then head on over to tabithabirdweaver.com right now and sign up for the Karmic Alchemy community. We're going to be talking about how each of these issues um, really get stored in our body, particularly we can access those through the hubs of our chakras. But anyway, we're going to move on. The things that hurt us the most, this ongoing experience of distress and, and suffering that we have come from five hallmarks of CPTSD. And if you want to know more about this, uh, please reference Pete Walker. He has written a great book called CPTSD from Striving or Surviving to Thriving. Um, it's a really, really great book for understanding what CPTSD is and why it's happening. Anyway. The top five things that hurt us throughout our lifetime are emotional flashbacks. We're going to talk more about what that is in just a minute. Toxic shame. Um, I bet you already can feel that. Uh, Self-abandonment is one of the things that really, really hurts us over, over our lifetimes. We have a vicious, absolutely vicious inner critic. And did you know that not everybody criticizes themselves the way you do? Yeah, that was a shock to me too. Um, Also, going along with all of these symptoms, we have social anxiety. And I know you understand exactly what that means. So today we're going to dig into emotional flashbacks and toxic shame, and we'll address the other three in upcoming podcasts. We're going to do a mini series here. An emotional flashback is something that every person with CPTSD has experienced. They're remarkably common, maybe even daily for some of us, maybe even multiple times a day. And what emotional flashbacks are, are you tapping into your felt sense of the trauma that you experienced, the abuse, the neglect, whatever it was that that was in your life. We know what that feels like when we're in that situation. And some of us have been in situations like that from before birth. And so we came in understanding hierarchy and and how to stay safe. And uh, sorry, I lost the word there for a minute. What I'm really trying to get at here is that emotional flashbacks can feel like part of your personality. They can feel like just something that happens and that you think everybody experiences, but they they don't. So here's an example or a definition of what an emotional flashback is. An emotional flashback is an experience in your body, and sometimes you can feel it in your cognition, but absolutely will feel it in your body. And it is related to implicit memory, which we've talked about here before, but implicit memory is stuff that you remember, but you don't remember you remember, right? It's, it's not necessarily you remembering the birthday cake at your sixth birthday. That's an explicit memory. You know all the details about what was going on. Implicit memory is something that we have just accumulated over time, especially pre-verbally, right? So before we could talk, most of our memory, all of our memory is implicit because we don't even have words to express what's happening. So because emotional flashbacks come from implicit memory, we can't really identify why we're feeling the way we're feeling. And so one thing that people say to me in treatment and that I've experienced myself is like, all of a sudden I was feeling this way, or I went from zero to 60 
during this experience emotionally. And so what we're noticing when we talk about that is the intensity. So there's a real intensity. However you respond, some of us get quiet. Some of us have rage. Some of us have trembling fear. Some of us completely dissociate. Your environment created your style of dealing with this and the emotional flashbacks that you have. So what you're looking for to identify emotional flashbacks are rapidness of onset, like it happened, flooded, overwhelmed, right? Or if you're in fight, then attacking, attacking can happen or total freeze. Lots of different ways, but the, the, Rapidness of onset and the intensity are how you know that this may be an emotional flashback. And if you have any kind of sense in the situation that your reaction is too much for what's happening, then you're in an emotional flashback. And I'll give you a quick story about that in just a second. What keeps emotional flashbacks going is shame. And shame in families that develop CPTSD has been weaponized. And, you know, in our culture right now in the United States, we're like, all shame is bad shame. And that's not actually true. Shame came about because we needed to understand the impact of our behavior on other people. Toxic shame is when somebody only, you know, tries to control your behavior so that you don't impact them at all, which is what narcissistic people do, right? You cannot impact them or there is punishment that comes with that darn it. <laughs> it's really hurtful. But that shame has been also toxicified to mean that there's something fundamentally wrong with you. Not that you made a bad decision and hurt people, which could also stem into guilt, right? But toxic shame and toxic guilt are hallmarks of why we develop CPTSD, okay? And they keep us trapped in it because toxic shame makes us feel like it is our fault, it is from the beginning our problem. They didn't do anything to harm us. We're just too sensitive. They didn't do anything to make us feel small and worthless. We're just too tender or we misunderstood. And so there's this twisting and this gaslighting that happens that really makes us internalize that toxic shame. And so guess what? We develop a vicious inner critic. And we're going to talk about that in a couple of episodes. But that shame stops us from asking for help. And so the fact that you're even listening to this and willing to look at yourself and maybe recognize that you're injured and need some care is amazing. It's amazing that you're doing that. Congratulations and ouch, it really hurts. So when we're talking about emotional flashbacks, this is also where we harm people that we love because we snap or we leave or whatever your response is happens and it hurts them. And that shame comes in and we have to not feel shame because it's death, right? It's murder to our soul, shame. And so we deny that we hurt the people we love. And we may do that less than the people who did it to us. And that's great. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate that we improve on what we had, but we're still causing harm. And so one of the important things that you are going to need to do is figure out how to stay present when those flashbacks happen. And that's no easy task. I want to encourage you that you can do it, right? But it's no easy task. So here's an example of an emotional flashback. <clears throat> um, I made a conscious decision when I was a therapist and I was starting to practice a new tool that I was just going to pause and pay attention every time so I could learn about it, right? And so the tool was a subconscious tool to help me ground and like recenter myself and what's actually happening instead of my felt sense of what's happening which may be wrong because I'm not currently under attack, right? So here's the point. I, uh, one morning was leaving, had a mug of coffee, put it on top of the car, forgot all about it, and it fell off as I was backing out the driveway and broke, right? And I was livid, so upset with myself. And I didn't know it was myself. I was just mad at the coffee cup at the time, right? But I, I honored my commitment to pause and stay, like what's actually happening here. And I realized, okay, that coffee cup, I don't even know where I got it. It's not important to me. It's not expensive. 
it's not the coffee cup that I'm upset about, right? It's not the coffee. Coffee's cheap. I We use cold brew in my house, so it's like pour and heat up and we're good to go. Not hard there. Oh my gosh, I'm embarrassed. Well, there's nobody on the street. Nobody's even watching you right now. So what's really, really happening? And wouldn't you know, the stuff I'd already been working on for a decade in therapy was the stuff that was coming up. You're stupid. You never do anything right everybody's making fun of you or judging you when that is something that did happen growing up. And I know you know about that. So those thoughts were the thing that was creating the emotional distress and my energetic, like I could have kicked something if I hadn't, if there had been something that wouldn't hurt my foot, I would have kicked it. So I took just a pause and recognized, I don't really care about the mug. I'm not even late. So like, there's no time pressure here. What is happening is I'm afraid I'm going to be hurt again because I made a mistake. A normal mistake. I mean, I'm sure there are hundreds of videos, if not thousands, of people doing stuff just like that on the internet, right? It's silly human stuff, but to me, it was life or death, and it kicked in that fight or there's the dog <laughs> we do not want this the alarm is off it kicked in that alarm so when you're thinking a little bit about how to basically stop having those things that are so painful you're going to have to learn how to be present and notice that they're happening if you want some tips and tricks on that as well as how to know what's going on with your chakras and where to intervene there come on over again i want to invite you to the karmic alchemy community we have a private podcast where we go a little deeper into this stuff um, and you're free to ask questions there there is a way to you know put a thread up for questions and i would love to get some questions from you I hope that this has been at least maybe given you some insight that those things are happening because you are injured and because you need care and nurturing. Congratulations on being on this healing journey no matter where you are. I am so glad that you are here today. I'll see you in the next episode where we're going to talk about self-abandonment, the vicious inner critic, and social anxiety. See you then.